nearly 40 years after the most significant nuclear power plant fire in the United States, the circumstances still seem a bit incredible. It happened on March 22, 1975, at the Browns Ferry Nuclear Power Plant near Decatur, Alabama. Plant workers used a candle to test for air leaks in seals where electrical cables entered the reactor building. The seals leaked, however, and the candle flame ignited the flammable portion of the seal, and the fire spread to the cables that passed through the seal. The fire burned for almost seven hours and affected more than 1,600 electrical cables. About a third of those cables were important to plant safety, so emergency repairs were needed just to shut the reactor down safely. Investigations of the Browns Ferry event revealed that U.S. nuclear power plant fire protection features were not good enough. As a result, the NRC developed substantial new fire protection requirements for plant operators to do several things. Reduce the chances of a fire starting, quickly detect, control, and put out any fires that do occur, and protect enough plant equipment to safely shut the plant down if a fire starts and isn't extinguished quickly. This approach, called deterministic fire protection, ensures U.S. nuclear power plants can safely deal with a fire. These deterministic requirements assume a fire in any area of the plant could damage the plant's shutdown ability. As we've said, the NRC requires nuclear power plants to use multiple layers of fire protection. Plants have to physically separate important systems, as well as use fire barriers, such as walls and insulation. Plants must also have systems that detect and automatically respond to fires, such as automatic fire sprinklers. In addition, all nuclear power plants have trained firefighters on site 24-7 to respond to fire alarms. In some cases, plants supplement these layers with additional measures, such as having fire protection staff monitor the plant for fire hazards. In 2004, the NRC offered plants another approach, called risk-informed, performance-based fire protection. These new requirements use detailed assessments and performance criteria to focus fire protection features on the issues most important to protecting the reactor. The NRC uses this approach to aim for the ultimate outcome of fire safety, rather than listing specific fire protection features to achieve that outcome. This protects public health and safety while giving the plant operator flexibility in providing the protection. For example, in some plants, important pieces of equipment are separated by significant distances. A risk assessment can show fire barriers are unneeded, since the pieces are so far apart that a fire would fail to damage both sets of equipment. The NRC's technical experts review this type of analysis to ensure it's done properly. In 2010, two plants, Sharon Harris and Oconee, took the lead in completing their transition to the risk-informed, performance-based fire protection program. Several dozen other plants have told the NRC they'll also move to the newer approach, and we've got specialists devoted to reviewing their plans to make sure they're appropriate. The NRC oversees fire protection at nuclear power plants through inspection and oversight. In the year 2000, we implemented the reactor oversight process, which includes quarterly, annual, and triennial fire protection inspections. In addition, we work with international codes and standards organizations, nuclear industry representatives, professional societies, and research organizations to address ongoing fire protection activities. One example of NRC oversight came in 2006, when we issued a letter related to a problem we found with some of the fire-resistant materials used to protect cables. Our tests had found that some of these materials did not perform as designed. All U.S. nuclear power plants had to respond publicly regarding the problem and tell us how they addressed this issue. Throughout the 2000s, both industry researchers and their NRC counterparts tested what happens to a plant's electrical circuits during a fire. In 2009, we published new guidance based on this information regarding how plants should analyze electrical circuits needed to shut down a reactor after a fire. Both of these deterministic and risk-informed fire protection approaches ensure the plants are appropriately protecting your health and safety. The NRC's inspection and oversight ensure the plants are following the rules and can safely shut down if a fire breaks out.